Hello guys, I'm in the garage today for two reasons. First, this is the coolest place in my house. And I mean it, literally, temperature-wise. We've got 31 degrees Celsius outside in the street, and here is on the ground floor a soothing 25 degrees Celsius, which is very pleasant. Second reason, I've got some garage tools in my garage, which I might need in getting an answer to today's question of my video. Can I use my Chinese HF amplifier with my IACOM IC705 radio safely and reliably? Stay tuned for more. All right, so guys, for the beginning, we need some clarity here. When we speak about Chinese simple and cheap comparatively 45 watt amplifiers, HF linear amplifiers, uh, normally we have in mind two finished products. One is called MXP50M and another is Mini PA50. It's important not to mess up these two together. These are different products and these are different power amplifiers. In my video today, I'm not going to talk about the MXP50M because I don't own one. I have Mini PA50, this one, Mini PA50. Why, in general, this question, if this Mini PA50 could work with my ICOM IC705, arose? Because if you take a look, at the user manual of ICOM IC705, you might find pretty unusual warning. And it reads, when the send terminal controls an inductive load, such as a relay, that's exactly in this power amplifier, it's a relay switching called the PTT. So, uh, when the send terminal controls an inductive load, such as a relay, a counter electromotive force can malfunction or damage the transceiver. Ooh, that's pretty scary. To prevent this, we recommend adding a switching diode on the load side of the circuit to absorb the counter electromotive force. That's a bit of a warning, right? <laughs> so, and uh, it turns to be that that ICOM IC705 PTT line or the send socket on the radio might be pretty pretty sensitive to some transient voltage spikes and uh, well and uh, ICOM just warns you to take some measures to balance this to fix this so, as it comes to another amplifier, MXP50M, it's clear that this power amplifier has got no diodes on, on its switching relays. The relays which switching, you know, uh, transmit and receive and whatever. So, and that is, for that amplifier, it's, it's really dangerous to, to be connected to ICOM IC705. So, now, uh, is it okay for the Mini PA50? For that, we need to take a look at the schematic diagram. We actually see that on the schematic diagram, the relays, there are two relays, J5 and J, J6, which, go, which are involved in the, in the contact or the, in the relationship with the PTT line of ICOM IC705. So, uh, and, uh, Voila, perfect. These, uh, these relays are defended by the diodes as it's recommended by the ICOM's user manual. Hooray! I wanted, of course, to make sure it's all okay, it's all in place, and you can only know this while disassembling the whole, the, the whole construction of Mini PA50. All right, so let's take a look at the PCB. So G5 and G6, these are the relays of our interest, which might generate this electromotive force 
on this engagement. We need to look now for the diodes D5 and, and the D6, which would protect us from this force. And here it is. You see D5 and you D6. And actually all the relays, you know, this is the uh, other side of all the relays or the contacts of all the relays on this PCB. Each and every relay is protected by this diode, which is mentioned in the ICOM IC705's user's manual. So D5 is most important and D6 and, and, and all the others are protected too. So whatever side this terrible electromotive force come from the brave diodes are here to meet it and fight it now we have to make one more thing clear before we can be sure that this uh, mini pa50 is suitable uh, for the icom ic705 is the maximum current which the send pin on the radio on the icom ic705 can handle it says it can handle 200 milliamps now how can we know if uh, if these uh, two relays which are directly loading uh, the icom ic705 pin the send pin what current do they impose onto this pin if we look at the specs of the Omron relays, G5V1 and G5V2, uh, we'll find that G5V1 has got uh, the coil resistance of 960 ohms, and G5V2, the, the bigger one, the bigger one, uh, has got uh, the um, uh, coil resistance 288 ohms. When we combine these two resistances in parallel, because these two relays are, are switched in the schematic diagram in parallel, we're getting 221 ohms. So 221 ohms at 13 volts of 12, 13 volts of power supply, it gets around 54 milliamps of current. So the pin can handle 200 milliamps and we only gonna load it with 54 milliamps so i think it's okay leave it as it is uh, there's no need to make some another independent so to say transistor switching uh, arrangement i can say now that theoretically we are ready and it's okay to run the mini pa50 power amplifier with my icom 705 Motorola MRF186 package of uh, two FET transistors it could be you see just the space blank no labels on it it means that it's kind of a clones of this transistor it may work it may not I don't know what is nice about this transistor that according to the data sheet it's uh, able to produce more than 100 watts of power so and it's pretty thermal stable and uh, it's able to withstand even severe mismatches like you know it's said in the data sheet that it uh, can withstand swr five to one so it means if this transistor is going to work at the power level of 45 or 50 watts then it's uh, well still a big reserve in power uh, for it not to to be you know like not overheating and so far and so on the mini pa50 even if uh, externally uh, it may look uh, similar to the another Chinese linear power amplifier MXP50M Mini PA50 is a bit different. Uh, the power amplifier part is actually exactly the same, just the beer power amplifier. 
but uh, all the rest uh, schematic of the mini pa50 is much more sophisticated originally the mini pa50 is designed to work together with the iesu ft817 transceiver uh, it can switch bands automatically when you switch a band in your transceiver then the automatically the bands are switched on the power amplifier too the band data system in iesu ft817 is uh, i think different from from the system in the icom ic705 so but nevertheless uh, it doesn't matter it doesn't matter in this case uh, you can switch the bands manually all right guys just a few more words about specificity of chinese products you may wonder why there's a hole here it should be a uhf socket as so so as, as it's for the antenna so it should be for the input yes of course it was but i have removed it why because it's the chinese specificity these two connectors are these two sockets are different <laughs> so uh, this one is okay and this one is not so when you try this PL259 plug, screw onto this so-called SO239 socket from China. You can only make one or two turns and then it stucks. And that's it. You have central pin moving with a cable and rotating. It means not good. It should sit firmly and shouldn't rotate or move well obviously the reason hides in difference uh, or in pitch size uh, of these two sockets so normally the pl259 standard requires 24 threads per inch so and this is good the, the this is 24 threads per inch and this is wrong i think it's uh, less than 24 threads per inch and then it makes a very bad connection what i will need to do so i will uh, just change this and it's gonna be okay another serious flaw for this mini pa50 is a very poor heat sinking well that's that's maybe maybe that's not important if you buy the mini pa50 as it is and you only run some 25 watts power level and you only use it intermittently and only for instance ssb which is very light mode uh then it might work it might work as it is so but even then the quality and the design, the principal design of heat sinking is, I mean, I don't like it. It's very poor. There's no external heat sinking originally. I installed one later on. I'll tell you about that in a second. But uh, there's no external heating on, on, on the box. That's why it's so compact. So where's the, where's the heat sink? This is a heat sink. Just simple three millimeter thick aluminum plate obviously this is very poor heatsink so to add injury to the insult it's very poorly connected with the with the transistor uh with the transistors pad to adjust the height they needed something and they thought yeah well okay we we will put a, a, a small piece of aluminum and then it goes like that and then it screws together so the all connection between the transistor and and the, the heatsink whatever it is it's this small tiny piece of aluminum it means very poor connection thermal wise it's full of uh, invisible tiny tiny air pockets and air is a very terrible conductor due to these microscopic air pockets the ability to dissipate heat 
is diminished dramatically. The whole idea, which I'm going to try, is to apply a small amount of thermal paste. So first for, to, to this surface and connect uh, surface to surface with the, with the transistor. Then to cover this part of this small tiny place plate uh, with another drop of uh, thermal paste and then to seat it on this on this plate and then to cover this side the whole this side with the thermal paste on this side of the plate and then to install it here and from the from the exterior i de i decided to install a huge big heatsink which by the means of screws is fixed first to the uh, to the box to the bottom of the box and then the same screws will fix this plate also to the bottom of the box in this maybe complicated way i hope to achieve at least you know much better thermal conductivity of the heatsink and in this way i hope it's gonna work it's gonna stand full uh full 45 to 50 watts of output using it more or less you know in the in the intensive duty cycle like operating cw or maybe operating uh, digital so we will see so guys it's not a tutorial on how to do step by step all these you know arrangements with the heatsink and then drilling and whatever it's just an idea i'm just sharing my idea on how did i make it and maybe it could be a good idea for you to make your own so but this is not a tutorial i take no responsibility whatever you do with your pa or with you all right guys so i've done everything except the front panel the 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 face plate there are four bolts four screws going through the heatsink and through the box and through the original heatsink the aluminum aluminum plate so and it all these three parts the heatsink the box and the original heatsink they all are now fixed and tightened up with these four screws i was sure that the screws when they go through heatsink box and another heatsink that they protrude at, at only extent not to touch the pcb board and they don't now but you have to be sure so you have to measure first if you do this uh, please please be sure that, the, that that these bolts these screws not short circuit anything on your pcb hey welcome back to the shack guys so my mini pa hf power amplifier is ready for tests my icom ic705 transceiver is gonna be ready in a second for test i'll just take off the 3d printed cover switch it on so i um i have my transceiver i have my swr power meter it's okay it's pretty precise one i have my 50 ohms uh, dummy load i'm gonna measure the temperature of the final transistor which is amrf 186 by motorola as I said in the garage, I hope it's original one, not fake one, because I see a label printed on it. Well, I've read some guys telling, well, labels could be fake too. Okay, maybe they could, but anyway. Test number one, the classical test. Power supply is 13.8 volts. Transceiver drive is 5 watts output. So the low pass filter is an 80 meter band. Press PTT, 38 maybe watts, and the current draw is 4.9 amps, 40 meter band, we have solid 40 watts output at 4.1 amps, 
So 30 meter band, 5 watts in input. We have almost 40 watts, 39 probably, almost 40 watts at 5.5 amps draw. Okay, 20 meter band. We have 40 watts output exactly. 4.0 amps, 4 amps on 20 meters. Okay, 17 meter band. The same low pass filter. 40 watts output at 5.6 amps. 15 meter band. Change filter to 15 meter. And we have almost 40 watts output. And the draw 4.25 amps. 12 meters. Well, 35 watts around that. And the draw is 5.0 amps. So we have 30 watts output on 10 meters. And the draw is 3.90 amps. All right, so far so good. The classical test shows that this power amplifier uh, being uh, fed with a power supply of 13.8 volts from the desk power supply and driven by the 5 watts from the transceiver is a really pretty nice 40 watts output power amplifier real 40 watts now the power supply voltage of course is important and um, if you would like you know to supply this power amplifier with a, let's say real 12 volts or 13 volts or something like that less than 13.8 so then of course you would have lesser power output uh, maybe some 30 maximum 35 watts basically and this behavior of the transistor is pretty well documented in the in in the data sheet and it should be like this in the data sheet uh, i've also read that uh, the standard schematic circuit this amplifier or this transistor rmrf 186 is employed in is an amplifier circuit which is uh, fed by 28 volts of power supply no i'm not gonna apply 28 volts to this specific to, to this particularly uh, <laughs> thing and the mini pr mini pa 50 hf power amplifier and no no but uh, to apply a bit more than 13.8 i think it's a good idea so after some experimenting behind the camera i've come to the conclusion that 18 volts uh, sounds nice let's apply 18 volts and see and then applying uh, 18 volts i decided to reduce the uh, power output of the transceiver to 2.5 watts this is i think a very intriguing decision uh, because 2.5 watts for the transceiver is just very very light regime the transceiver is pretty pretty happy aren't you and uh, so and the power output should be quite okay 40 to 50 watts anyway so and here we kill two rabbits simultaneously we save battery for for the transceiver we have lighter uh, so to say regime for the for the final transistors because uh, not so heavy load on the on the input uh, so uh, maybe less heating for this resistor which is across the input transformer so higher voltage less current less driving power all arguments for let's do it test number two power supply voltage is 18 volts driving power from the transceiver is 2.5 watts 80 meter band all right we see almost 40 watts maybe 39 watts and the current draw is 3.9 amps 40 meter band 
and here we go 50 watts output and the current draw 3.9 amps 30 meter band switching the low pass filter all right so almost 40 watts and the current draw is 4.4 amps 20 meter band all right 55 watts and the current draw 3.8 amps 17 meter band solid 40 watts and the draw 4.6 amps so 15 meter band let's switch the low pass filter here all right around 50 watts and the draw 3.9 amps 12 meter band and 40 watts output on 12 meters and the current draw is 4.3 amps 10 meter band all right almost 40 watts basically 40 watts output at 3.4 amps current draw that's it with the test number two it seems that that this power amplifier likes higher power supply voltage and uh, it seems for me personally that somehow the 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 heat regime is a, a bit lighter for that reason all right guys this is my third test today the last one the temperature test i've got an infrared thermometer and uh, i've got stopwatch and uh, i'm gonna transmit from my transceiver cw and then measure the temperature and uh, well and then see how hot the transistor becomes and uh, how hot these resistors become all right let's start the stopwatch and start calling cq at the same time start calling cq all right so the power output is 2.5 watts the um, power supply voltage is 18 volts at the moment okay again again and one more time and now I can measure okay 42 degrees 42 degrees well it's okay okay I stopped at 1 minute 30 uh, so 42 degrees for the for the transistor it's it, it's very good uh, these resistors they are hot yeah they are hot not 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 very very hot no smoke yet but uh, but it's uh, hard to keep the finger on it while at the same time i can easily keep the finger on uh, on the transistor let's resume and, and let's uh, let's start again for some few more minutes the box getting a little bit warm and the heatsink is getting also a little bit warm again uh, what is good that it means if the box and the heatsink getting warm together simultaneously actually so it means there is a thermal conduction uh, some kind of a thermal contact between the box and the heatsink and the transistor so maybe that's was not a bad idea to make this mod <laughs> we'll see all right so now 
it's after a second a minute and a half let's take a measure 52 degrees 52 degrees all right and the um, 60 degrees for the resistor so basically uh, for this uh, type of transistor package i think 100 degrees or a, a, a little bit more than the 100 degrees that would be already an alarming temperature but uh, well the internal junction uh, temperature it's it's 200 uh, so but of course it's not on the package case that's internal so now i'm imitating a very very heavy duty cycle for cw operation like you call cq like in the park activation you call cq uh, then you're entering somebody then you call again cq so basically the gaps between the transmissions are pretty show pretty short again okay let's make it till five minutes continuous calling cq or imitating the heavy duty cycle morse code work in the field again okay for the transceiver working at 2.5 watts output is just a breeze just a happiness so and it's very and one last time so we see 62, 63, 63, coming up to 65, and then stops, and then 66. So, all right, so let's stop it after five minutes and a bit. Both the case and the heatsink becoming pretty warm actually hot but not so terribly hot as it used to be okay summing up guys the major question of today's video can i use my icom ic705 transceiver with my mini pa50 hf power amplifier is definitely yes you can mini pa50 is usable with icom ic705 just right out of the box it already got what the icom ic705 user manual demands for it's a protective diet to compensate the possible counter electromotive force and there's no need to modify the ptt line on the power amplifier side like adding on some additional extra switching transistor or something like that uh, because uh, these switching uh, transmit and receive relays in this power amplifier only draw probably some 50 milliamps of current and the send line of the transceiver is capable of handling 200 milliamps so I thought it's pretty safe. I've tried it and it seems like it's working and no damage, no any, any signs of transceiver feeling unhappy. But it's my transceiver, my power amplifier and my experience. If you do something uh, to your transceiver or, or to your amplifier or to yourself, it's your responsibility, guys. I went for more dramatic uh, drilling <laughs> of the case and making more dramatic changing changes in order to supply this power amplifier with a little bit more powerful and capable heatsink. I think in my case it's gonna be okay. Uh, in my next videos I will uh, try to use it in the real battlefield, activating a park probably. It should work for digital FT8 I think also okay maybe with a little bit diminished power power output on the safe side but just you know I would start with the with the with the like 25 watts and then increasing it up uh, and you know feeling how how the thermal things are going on uh, with the amplifier 
uh, because FT8 is, is, is basically, you know, 50% mode because you transmit like 15 seconds and you receive 15 seconds and that's strictly, strictly, the algorithm is very strict, 50-50. Uh, I think this, this kind of digital regime is pretty acceptable for this, uh, uh, for this amplifier even, uh, even at, the, at, the, at the full power, like 40, 40 to 45 watts. The only problem which uh, I'm still not very happy is, is uh, the heating of these three resistors. Two resistors make the power amplifier linear, uh, creating the, 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 the negative feedback, and one, one bigger resistor creates, you know, acceptable uh, conditions for the transceiver, uh, diminishing uh, the SWR on the entry. And guys, if you know uh, such good resistors, on, or probably you have tried already to replace these resistors with the more powerful ones please please let me know in the comment section this is really annoying you know to know and to feel all the time that transistor is not getting hot or getting normally hot and these resistors are getting abnormally hot so with the set nothing much to add guys please consider subscribing if you like what i'm doing and for now Peace and victory for Ukraine. Stop the war. I hope to see you next time in my next video. 73, Tara for now. This is Linus, Lima Yankee 2, Hotel.